Hey guys, Ole Anderson from the Berkshire, Massachusetts Treasure Hunter. Uh, I haven't done a update on my Innovated Marine Nouveau 40 lately, so as you can see, it's looking a bit sad. Um, I think in the last update, I told you guys that all my calls were dying, all my call frags. Um, I think I got a bad batch of salt. Uh, or I did a huge newbie mistake. That could be it too. <laughs> uh, my parameters were way off though with the magnesium and the alkalinity. It was sky high. So, but also at that point I bought some acros frags and I put them in and everything seemed okay for like a week. And then suddenly overnight one day, everything started to go south and I pretty much lost every frag in here. Uh, so I got kind of disgusted about the whole thing. I was actually gonna take the tank down, but I'm gonna give this another shot. Uh, as I hate to admit it, it was probably a beginner mistake. <laughs> but um, yeah, as you can see, that's the A-cans, nothing left. Even some sewers down here, the, the um, core line algaes has taken over, which is okay, I guess. It's getting under glass and that, so that's a sign that this things are better. Uh, but yeah, everything is pretty much dead. I'm not so sure about this one over here. It might be okay, but uh, things are turning around. My parameters are stable. I changed salt brand i was using the instant ocean crystals and i don't know what happened with that one batch i bought so i'm back to just regular instant ocean and everything is down to where the parameters should be um, down the road i can always dose if i need it uh, as you can see some of it is coming back the hardy calls uh, the pallies and the sewers, uh, they were not happy, but they didn't die. Uh, my letter call is like gone. So yeah, I have a little bit of algae, as you can see. Um, right now I'm only running with one of the lights. I don't need all that light right now. Um, so yeah, fish, are, it didn't bother the fish, I guess. They're doing fine, so. There's two um, two clownfish, there's the hawkfish, there's the coral beauty, and then there's a lawnmower blini in here somewhere, and he's eating away of the algae. Um, there's some hermit crabs, and I think there's one snail left. They all survived too, so uh, I don't have any diatoms, not much anyway. So yeah, the tank is kind of stable now. So like I said, it could have been a huge uh, beginner mistake putting calls in way too early. So so yeah, I'm gonna take all the frags out that died. So this is kind of the before, cost me a lot of money, $600 I would say or more, but lesson learned. Uh, the tank is now, what, four months, three months old. I'm going to let it cure some more. I'm going to put some more soft calls in one at a time, see what happens. Uh, and I guess I'm not going to do acros for quite a while, even though I do should have the light for it. Um, so, yeah, so this is kind of the before. And I'll show you when we get to the after. i got to do a water change, clean things up, and I'll get back to you later. So kind of sad. That's all. I guess I might keep the plugs. Some of them anyway. Uh, I scraped as much core line algae off as I could and put it in the tank. And I'll give you an update when I do the water change and clean it up. Okay, later. Okay, I changed the water. I did a water change. 
cleaned the back chambers for algae. That's what you can see floating around the water. I'm doing a bubble scrub right now. All it is is a air pump with a stone in the tank. Works like a skimmer. Going to stir all the algae up and it's gonna get caught right there and over on the other side and then I'm gonna change the filter path and we should have a very clean tank. So I'll get back to you. So water change is done. All the coals are gone. I moved these sewers over here. He likes to hawk the camera. I like him. Um, there's the other clownfish. The pallies down here are doing okay. And these are doing okay. So, yeah, so we're pretty much starting over. I did put the letter call over there. I don't think it's quite dead yet. Uh, it might be soon though, but we'll see, I guess. So, yeah. So, I'll let this cure a bit longer. I should probably have done that from the start. I'll keep an eye on all these sewers and pallies and see what they do. I'll keep measuring the water, do water changes. And I'll let this cure for a while longer. And then I'll try some a few calls again and see how they do. I'm gonna stay away from acros though. Uh, I might make a softy call tank, uh, maybe a little mix. So uh, when we get about a year into this tank, I would like to try with some flower anemones, see how they do. Uh, my torch I had was doing okay, so I might try one of those again. So yeah, so this tank is cleaned up and we will let that run for a while. And then of course, I have the other tank over here. I'll just turn the light on. I've had this running for what? A month, month and a half maybe. With the light off and all parameters are perfect, the tank cycled and now it's just curing. Uh, I put a bit of bacteria in it one, every once in a while and I put a couple pellets of fish food in there so they have something to live off. Uh, so this is going to be the main softy tank and it's probably going to be fishless. Uh, I will have crabs and a few things, but I don't think I will have any fish. If I do, it'll probably be a fire fish or something, uh, but nothing crazy. Um, and this tank is doing good. All the parameters are perfect. Uh, it's the 14 gallon Aquion tube from uh, Petco. I'm gonna try and run this as cheap as possible. Like I said earlier, the tank, it wasn't really that cheap. It's not worth it, but it was like $48, I think. Uh, I had some points, so I got it about $15 cheaper. Um, I'm running the Seacam, the biggest Seacam filter. I love that filter. It's much better than the AquaClear because it has this feature that it can clean the water surface, so it's a skimmer and I think that's going to come in handy. I chose to leave the glass on, so we'll see how that goes. I have a little um, a little pump for water movement. It's not up, it's just running constantly, but it's one of the smallest ones you can get. I have a preset heater from Petco. I run them in most of our, my freshwater tanks and they're doing awesome, 78 degrees, so that's fine. Um, as you can see, no diatoms or nothing. That's probably because I've had the light off. When I start with the calls, which will be probably in the middle of next month, we'll see how it goes. Uh, the sand is perfect. So yeah. And then I got this little Aquanite, I think it is 30 watt. That's gonna run the softy tank. That should be plenty. It's only about half up right now. So should be plenty of light. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, that's about it. Well, actually, let me do an update on my other tanks while we add it. Hold on. So this is my 10 gallon uh, 
jungle tank. A uh, bunch of guppies in there. Um, I don't do anything to this tank really. You can see there's plenty of fries. And there's about 10 shrimps in here too. They hide though. But I see them every so often. Uh, ghost, no, ghost, not ghost shrimp. Uh, uh, what do you call them? The red ones. I can't even remember. Uh, I don't do water changes on this tank at all. Um, it just runs with the plants. I feed very sparsely and I have two uh, sponge filters, another heater from from uh, Petco and this runs with a old fashioned light. So, and there's the smallest aqua clear you can have. So like I said, I don't do water changes on this one and it's crystal clear. I just uh, add water when it gets low. There's some nerid snails in here. They take care of the little algae I get. I hardly get any. The, the plants outcompete the algae like crazy. And I had a potos plant. Anybody that has fresh water should go to your local nursery and ask for a potos plant. Just uh, take it out of the pot and clean it up, the, wash the roots so they're clean. You get four or five out of one. This is just one. And as you can see, here's the root for that. Uh, they suck all the nitrate out of the water, so this tank is getting cleaned like crazy. So, yeah, no water changes here. Let me show you the other two tank I have. So this is the 3.7 gallon from Petco. Uh, I, no, uh, Imagnetarium or whatever they're called. Uh, and it has a King Beta in it, and he's doing fine. This is my daughter's. I uh, just have a little LED I think I bought on the Wish app. The LED it came with broke. As you can see, we do have a bit of algae here. I do do water changes weekly in this little tank. I gotta clean up the algaes. So yeah, but it's a 3.7 gallon. Um, I would advise you get a five, but it's okay, I guess, with a 3.7. And over here we got the eight gallon uh, Aquion designer, LED designer tank. I try and make it fancy. Uh, it comes as a whole kit with light and everything. Um, I bought the Dragonstones on eBay. Um, as you can see, the plants are doing pretty good. It also has a beta. I got a beta fish and a bunch of guppies. And I think one platy. And it got some snails in here. Um, but besides that, it's doing awesome. I do do water changes in that too. Uh, here's the LED. There's just a push. You can do blue, a night light, I guess. I don't use that. And then we have the little filter hang on the back or in internal filter. It does okay for this tank. I always I run pure again in all my my tanks the first thing i did was taking this insert out of the filter i mean you can look through it it doesn't do no good at all so <coughs> and it's just a money maker sorry it's just a money maker for the company buy a new filter take everything out run your own stuff the good thing with pure again is you can regenerate it with bleach 50% bleach, 50% water, let it sit until it turns white. Rinse it good and put it in uh, some water with prime. Let it sit for five, uh, five, six hours. Rinse it good again and you're good to go. You gotta make sure all the bleach is out though. You can smell it if there's bleach in it after you regenerate it. That'll save you a lot of money. Also, this one runs with a potos plant. It's not that big because it doesn't get that much light in here. So you gotta have a little bit of light from a window or something so yeah so this is my well these are my daughter's tanks i only got that 10 gallon with the shrimp and guppies as a fresh water tank so yeah let me show you one more thing before i get off here though got this little five gallon salt water tank uh i got a little bit of calls in there uh i was going to use it for quarantine for calls and fish but uh 
I have another thing in here that I'm using for right now. If I lift here, you can probably see it. Look, parts, breeding parts in this tank. So, and the good thing is they just get caught in this upper sponge and I can just take it over to my fish tank. I want it in and let them crawl in the fish tank. And it's definitely going in here and it's in the other tank for the fish and they love it. Uh, I got a lot of parts in the back chamber of the filter on the bigger tank, but yeah, this is my little part breeding tank. They're doing pretty good. Uh, feed them with uh, some, can you remember what it is? I think it's some plankton. A little bit every once in a while. I uh, got some algae in there to help. So yeah, so that's it. And also in this video, I will include a little review of my $60 ATO I bought from Auto Top Off, I bought from eBay. So we should put this in this video too, I guess. So hold on, I'll get back to you guys. So here it is, the Smart ATO light. Uh, I think I got it on Amazon, but both Amazon and eBay have them. It's from Auto Aqua, Smart ATO Light, uh, leading ATO innovation. I don't know if that's true or not. Dual sensors in one, water system design and magnetic mount. Uh, definitely from China. So yeah, no moving parts. Got a controller, power adapter, universal tube holder. Got six and a half feet of tubing, a siphon brake, and a DC refill pump. So, pretty much got everything you need. So here's the, the controller itself. And it got the, can't really see it in here, it got the, Two holder. Let me open this. Hold on a second. So here we go. I unpacked it. Uh, you got the six and a half feet of tubing. You got a manual, which should probably come in handy. I can see you got to put the siphon on, so a little bit of water, so it doesn't, uh, so it breaks the water flow, so it doesn't suck back into the reservoir if that part over here uh, this in your tank if it starts to siphon water so come in handy power adapter here's the pump just a little guy uh, I don't know if we'll zoom in on that Doesn't really, oh, 280 liters per hour, I would say. So yeah, just a little pump. And here's the controller with a magnet. So, and as you can see, there's two lines right, uh, well, you can kind of see it in there. That's where your water line should be in between. So when it gets down under the bottom line it'll start pushing water and when I get it up to the top it will hopefully stop so I guess we'll see if it will so yeah and the universal hose holder just a little bracket with a screw so the whole thing was like $60 about as cheap as you are. I have seen some other ones for uh, 50 or 49 dollars I think not this brand or another brand and you also need a reservoir and that's about as expensive as this set so what I did I went to I think tractor supply and I just got a pet food container uh, I don't know how many gallons this is I don't even know it was 10 pounds so I would say probably three gallons of water. 
should be plenty for over a week. And yeah, this saves you a lot of headaches and makes it more stable in the fish tank. You can use it on fresh and salt, I would say. Uh, it's more important on a saltwater tank though to keep the levels in. So yeah, that's the little aqua, a smart auto light from Auto Aqua. So you should really get one because who wants to fill your tank every day? And you forget. So, and I'm not sponsored by these guys. I haven't been sponsored by anybody. So if anybody want to sponsor me with some new calls, it would be nice. <laughs> No, that's okay. I gotta order some calls online. So I'll probably go on eBay like I did last time and bid. I didn't have any problems with the calls from there. Well, I did, they all died, but that wasn't because of that. They were fine when they came. So the first couple of weeks, three, four weeks, it went good. Then it went south, so yeah. Uh, I'll get back to you when I set this up. Bye. So very important with the sensor, I'll put a light on here as you can see, it says power and pump, so don't mix them up I guess, so yeah you gotta put them in when you put the sensor up, so first it says put up the sensor, so why don't we do that, uh, hold on, I'll be right back to you. So it's actually a bit wrong. See the little two tips there? That's where your water line should be. Uh, the fail safe sensor is up top. This one here, over here. And the uh, ATO level sensor is the one over here. So yeah, you should put it at the bottom one, the water level. So as soon as it goes under this one, Right here, the lower one, it will start to fill the tank. So yeah, let's put that in. So it says in the instruction that it should be as far away from micro bubbles as possible. So here's my intake, one of the sides. I'm gonna put it right next to that. And as you can see, that would be too high. So, Put it right there, I guess. Uh, maybe a bit higher. There you go. Uh, so that would be, you can't have the water rod get too high right uh, here. It should actually be a bit lower. So I'm gonna lower this just a little bit. There you go. Uh, Let's see, maybe here. You can always adjust it after. So yeah, that's the sensor. Let's put the pump in that on, I'll be back. So here's the, I don't know if I can get the light right. So the power is the left one. Let's see, hold on. You just push that. Oh, where's the focus? Come on, focus. So here we go. So the power cable goes in this. And the pump goes in the other one. Easy peasy. Hold on, I'll be right back with the pump. I'm going to have to make some modification to this before I put the pump in. Because uh, if not, I can't open the lid. And I want to be close, so maybe I'll cut a... Right here. Cut a... So that can move freely without disturbing the hose and the pump instead of this hole. So why don't we do that? I'll be right back. So I got a power tool. I'll cut a line here so the lid can go freely up and down. I won't bother you guys with that noise. I'll be back when I cut it. So we cut a little hole. I have a clip here that I can put on. I just gotta find it. I can't remember where it is right now. And that way you can freely open and close and the hoses will just stay there, the hose and uh, the power, so we won't interfere with the lid. 
So let's get back to the assembly of the ATO. I'll get back to you. So you got the little pump. See, you get this end. But we don't need the tripod. So let's see what we can do here. I don't know if I can catch it on camera while I'm doing it, but hold on. I'll put it in here. So the pump goes in where it says pump. Make sure it's in there good. And that's pretty much it. So you got the water or sensor up here for the water. You got the uh, power on the left side, pump on the right. Okay. So that goes, the pump of course goes in the canister. So let's do that. So, uh, I don't have any fancy space, so that's going to go right here. Oh, actually, maybe this way. So, so the pump goes in. Let's see, i got to make sure this is not tangled. You know, we always have some mess here with wires. I'll clean that up after. So... goes down here I'll put it in the bottom and I might uh, do something here so it stays in place but you got the pump down there I should probably get those suction cuts a bit wet so yeah so that stays down there and then we get the hose. Hold on, let me get back to you when I get all this untangled. So with any hose that's been put together, won't be straight. So what you can do is run it under some warm water and try and coil it the other way. And it should be straight. straight. So let's do that, or I'll do that, I'll be back. There you go, heat the hose up and it's more manageable. Let it run under the warm faucet for a while and it'll be soft and you can work with it. Just a little trick. Let's put it on the pump. So I had to take the pump off again because this is very tight. So what you do is you grab, either run it under the faucet in hot water again or get a hot cup of water. You just leave your hose in there till it gets soft. See if it's getting, yeah, it's getting softer. It's about as warm water as your faucet can make. Guess you can boil some water too if your water's not that hot. And then you should be able to, I probably can't do this one-handed. Let's see. I don't want to break it. No, I got to put it on with two hands. Hold on. Fits on there very snug. I gotta push it down just a little bit more. So, what you can do is heat this with a lighter too. I mean, the hose in the end if you have a lighter. But warm water works just fine. I have to use both hands though. So, put the pump back in the, in the canister. Uh, let's see. Down here. And then you connect the hose up to the bracket, which I have to do. So hold on, I'll have to find the bracket. I'll be right back. Here's the little bracket. It goes on like this. Uh, I think I'm gonna put it over here actually. So, right under the pump, or over the pump. Snuck it up a little bit. Maybe a little bit more over here. Snuck it up a bit. Don't over tighten it, it's just plastic. So it's just pretty sturdy now. Take your hose. And oh, don't tell me I gotta take that. Hold on. I gotta use two hands again. 
but take your hose, get it through here. That way you can um, be, you gotta be over the water level. So well, hold on, I'll be back. There you go. Have it hanging uh, somewhat over the water. Um, what I did, I put some Gorilla Tape to make sure the hose don't go anywhere at all. It's on the back of the tank, so I won't be able to see it. Um, so yeah, you will have a little bit stick up. You can't have a kink in it. I tried to get it down to that knob, but then you get a kink, so that's no, no good. Um, and then, you, like I said, you got the sensor. I'll probably tape that wire back to the fish tank too, so it doesn't move up and down because that wouldn't be good so yeah so when i get some water in the reservoir we're going to test it out so hold on so very important you got to have this siphon on it uh if the case the water runs backwards it'll drip out or the remaining water will drip out so but it got to be over the water level of your reservoir and preferably in the reservoir so yeah so we should be all ready i just gotta fill some water in so hold on so it holds two gallon pretty comfortably uh so yeah some dirt in here i gotta pull out dust so two gallons that will last me a week and a half or so i would say maybe a week so I'll keep an eye on and see what it does, so then you can close the lid, so no more dust gets in there, and then we just need to plug it in. I'm just going to plug it in this one right now. Uh, the sensor's light up, just lit up, so I assume it's going to its program. So let's lift the sensor a bit up and see what it does. There you go. So yeah, I don't know if you saw that. We lift the sensor and out comes the water. So pretty cool. So that was the aqua what was it? Aqua? No, I can't even remember the name. The Aqua Auto Smart AGO Light. Save you a lot of work. Um, one thing though, I still got a whole of water, distilled water. That'll be my next review. This guy down here. Uh, my RO body, RODI. Uh, I finally got an adapter to the faucet, so that will be next time. Sorry about that. Pushed the wrong button. So that will be next time, our DI body. Um, and yeah, I got an adapter from the, for the faucet that I'm going to use. So this can do 50 gallon per day, which is plenty for me. I use uh, five gallon a week, if that. So, well, I got to have some RODI water for the... ATO, I guess so. Maybe 10 gallon a week. So, if you like this kind of content, press subscribe and like. I hope this little review was helpful of the Auto Aqua Smart ATO Light. I should have put it up a long time ago. So, do me a favor, press subscribe and like. Bye.